this is Noreen from Joya Cards and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome to my YouTube channel. Yay! For more of my Stampin' Up! card videos, please click that subscribe button and the little bell and you'll be notified when my videos release. Anyway, now let's go make a card. Hello everybody! Today's card is a pop-up card. It's super cool and it's made with Friendly Hello. Now Friendly Hello is out of the Celebration catalog. What Celebration is, is that Stampin' Up! a couple of times a year will have a promotion when you buy anything out of either their mini catalog or the annual catalog, um, at least $50 you get free product. And this set is actually in the back of the celebration. So you got these that are all for free if you buy 50. And the friendly hello is if you buy $100, you get the stamp set and the paper. Now I've already been using the paper. It's been much loved. So you can see I, I've cut it up and it has some really cool um, shapes and colors to it. So I've been using it uh, quite a bit. But we're going to go ahead and make this pop-up card. Now this is the front. Now I'm going to switch the camera uh, and show you the inside because you can't see it when the camera is down like this. So this is the front and here is the inside. And this is what the card looks like when it's popped open. Isn't that just cool? So we're going to go ahead and start with the card base, which is cherry cobbler five and a half by four and a quarter some one sheet of basic white five and a quarter by four and two of the friendly hello this is what's on the back and these are also going to be five and a quarter by four now i'm going to go ahead and open this up and we're going to do the inside first so go ahead and take that basic white and let's get the stamps so the stamps we're going to use is the little flower here the small little berry thing and the small leaf. Now I have a glass plate, so I don't necessarily have to use a stamping pad, but this is actually good to use when you're using uh, clear stamps, but I'm just fine without it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp up. And it really does depend on what kind of work surface you have, whether or not this is gonna go well for you. So uh, you might wanna test out your stamps first. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one here in my granny apple green and one here okay leave a little room for your leaves and then i'm going to grab the small leaf and i'm going to just put it right up to here and grab that small leaf again and i'm going to i should have given it a little bit more room and i'm going to put it right here all right and then i'm going to grab the little berries and just find a place for those as well. And put one right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and color them in. Now the only leaf I have to color in is the one that's just kind of open. And I'm using my light granny apple green and just filling in those little leaves like that. And then I'm gonna grab my dark daffodil delight and just put in the lines to the flowers just the lines and you don't necessarily have to do the lines and then coloring them in and then i'm going to grab my light daffodil delight and i'm going to fill in the rest of the flower and i'm going to grab my dark cherry cobbler on the pointy end and i'm just going to dot 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 the middle because if you fill it in it just it doesn't look as good. So I'm going to do the other one and I'll be right back. Now that I've got my inside all stamped and colored, I'm just going to put it in the middle of the card like so. Next, we are going to put the DS paper on both the inside and the outside of the card. And then we're going to cut the shape in one clean swoop. And this will make sure that it, it cuts out perfectly and your piece will go through rather smooth. So we're going to just put this on like that. Now the die that I'm using is from Hippo and Friends. It isn't the big one, it's the second biggest one. So I'm going to tape this down to the middle of my card how I want it. So I'm going to use some yellow 
delicate frog tape, which is my tape of choice. And I'm going to tape this down and I'm going to run it through a bunch of times, just enough so it gets both sides of the card. Don't go all the way through because you don't need to, but uh, go ahead and put it through your cutter. So this is what it's going to look like when you take it out of your die cutter. Now, if you notice, I taped on the inside. I didn't tape on the outside. And the reason why is because I had to run this puppy through like eight times. So when um, you do that many times through your die cutter, even when you use good tape, you run the risk of ripping it or at least putting in an imprint of the tape. So try to tape on the inside only, don't tape around the outside. So now you've got this perfect piece, but we actually aren't gonna use it because it's just a little too thick. So go ahead and uh, cut out a piece of basic white in with the same die. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the sentiment on there, but I want to tell you that sometimes when you cut something out and it looks like it's you know perfect size on all sides sometimes it's not so take your piece and fit it in that hole and make sure it's not just like one side's a tiny bit off because sometimes they are like if i turn this around sometimes it catches more on one side or the other so sit there and play with it for a minute and make sure you know close the card up make sure when you put it inside that you can lift this up pretty freely and it's not catching on something so i'm going to figure out my cuts sweet spot and then we'll stamp now i'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment which is right here in cherry cobbler and i'm just going to line it up on the bottom here and it just fits in nice and perfect just like that now we're going to make the mechanism and i turned my card the other direction here so you can see hopefully there's like a little box and there's a little piece that the pop-up flips out on and you're going to take two pieces of cherry cobbler one's going to be cut four by two and a half and one is two and a half by three fourths of an inch. Now, all my dimensions, all the items that I use are in the description of the video. So just go down to the description. You don't have to frantically write and I give you everything. There's even little bitly links you can click on. You can go directly to my Stampin' Up! channel and place an order directly. God forbid you place an order, place an order, place an order, ladies. Anyway, so we're going to take this piece of cherry cobbler and we're going to score it at one, two, and three inch. So this is the first one. Here's one inch. Here's two inch. And here's three inch. And you definitely want to go this way, not the short way, but the long way. And then you're going to take your other piece, which is two and a quarter by three fourths of an inch, and you're going to score it at one and a quarter inch. And lay it down and score, score, score. Okay, so that's how we score our mechanisms. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my bone folder and I'm going to make all these little scores like we're gonna make a box and i'll do it on this one as well and if you notice your little piece one side is going to be a tad bit longer than the other so all right so we got that and now let's go ahead and start putting it in the card you're going to take your big piece and on one side of it and one end you're going to snail it nice and good you're going to fold it up you're going to open this card and you're going to place it in the middle, kind of guess, and just right below, like a schmidgy schmidge below the fold line so it doesn't interfere with it folding so much. Now we're going to attach this other side. So I'm going to take my silicone craft sheet. If you guys don't have one of these, these are like the most amazing things that they have in the whole catalog because I can blend on here with inks i can snail i can glue and you can even see my little remnants of glue on here um and it's great it keeps my glass clean 
and it's awesome or if you're using dimensionals and you want to put it down for a second you can put it down here with the tape off and it's not going to do anything so the other side i'm going to put my silicone craft sheet in between here and i'm going to tape the snail and just snail the very edge don't go crazy so just the edge like that and then open it up and i want you to close the card and then just rub it there nice and good and when you open it up Ta-da! So that's the main mechanism, and we're gonna get to this in a minute, but now we need to work on Mr. Birdie. So we're gonna take the big stamp right here with the bird on it and take our memento, and I'm gonna do this upside down only because this is a pretty big stamp, and I wanna make sure that I've got it completely in. Kind of take a look at it, it looks a little sparse keep going and just stamp it up really 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 good and then use a piece of basic white and put her down just like this now I really should have tried to back it off the edge here because I am going to cheat a little bit I have a brother scan and cut and after we color this I'm going to put it in my brother scan and cut and cut it out. And then I'm going to use that image and take a piece of Daffodil Delight and program my machine to offset it just a little bit more and make an outline. But most people don't have a brother scan and cut, but we are going to color this. And then if you don't have one, you're gonna fussy cut it and just fussy cut it as much to the outline as you can. Maybe leave a little bit of a white space, which is crazy because I don't like white place, uh, spaces, but for this one I did. And then you're gonna take a piece of Daffodil Delight and you're going to, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute, but let's go ahead and color the bird. So I'm gonna take um, my dark Granny Apple Green, and I think I used Old Olive on this one, but I'm gonna use Daffodil or uh, Granny Apple Green on this, and it's the dark, and I'm gonna fill in the veins of the leaf here so just do that real quick just just the uh just the veins and now i'm going to do the um branch and i'm going to use dark crumb cake and just fill in the branch you can run over the feet it doesn't matter and just all the way up and now just like the inside, I'm gonna use Dark Daffodil Delight and just do the veins of the petals. Now that you've done the veins in the Dark Daffodil, I'm gonna take my Light Daffodil Delight and color in the rest of the petals. Once you uh, colored in with the Light Daffodil, I'm gonna go over with the Dark Daffodil again. I think these are more of a layering a uh, pen than a blending pen. I don't know, just kind of my opinion. But I'm just gonna make those uh, veins a little darker like that. And then just like the inside, I'm gonna take my dark cherry cobbler and just dot, 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 dot the inside of that flower. I, I filled one of them in once and I didn't like how it looked, so I'm just dotting those in. So that's how you do the flowers. Now I'm gonna take my dark cherry cobbler and I'm going to do the bird. Now I did part of him in dark cherry cobbler and then when I got close to his belly here I switched over to the light cherry cobbler and then I started with the light and dark daffodil delight. So just really carefully go over the bird. I'm trying not to run over the memento. I mean if you can that'd be great but um just try to avoid it so this is all dark cherry cobbler so right about here i'm going to switch over to the light cherry cobbler and try to layer them in and then give it a little bit of room for the daffodil so i'm going to carry this to right under his beak i think Fill this in and to the front of his feathers. 
trying to make some kind of transition here okay and I did give him an edge of cherry cobbler so I gave him an edge on his belly so very carefully try to give him a little edge here okay so I've got him about there I'm gonna fill it in with light daffodil delight first okay and you can leave them like that if you want really um let's do dark daffodil see if we can kind of blend i hate to say blend but layer these two together here maybe and we'll go back to the light i mean just play with it however you want i could even go back with the light cherry cobbler and make a little transition here too okay however however you want it to look but basically that's what i've done now here's the part where i cheat i did use my brother scan and cut so if you have one um and it, if you are um, a demonstrator or an extreme hobbyist you might want to consider getting one now a brother scan and cut is different from a cricket a cricket which i also have one of those um you use the cricket images online if you have the older ones you have cartridges and that's what you do or you can use svg files if, it, you, if you really get into it but what a brother scan and cut is is basically what it sounds like it's a scanner it does a lot of things but basically it will scan in this image and it's going to look for a closed line so a circle is an example of a closed line so it goes and it scans it and it's going to look for a line and it's going to cut around it now if you have an s like this it's going to go in and it's going to go like this 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 and around like this this and this okay so whenever you have a broken line it's going to want to go into it so if you have a brother scan and cut you just want to make sure you close up your lines now this one's obvious but and there's a lot of color here but i still have to close my lines and this flower has a bunch of tiny little broken lines and any little tiny broken line it will go ahead and cut into also if i don't want it to go too deep like on this one i made a line between the flower and the leaf right here because i don't want to cut this space out because it's just really tiny so um but i'm going to go through and close all these lines now if you don't have a brother scan and cut go ahead and you're going to need to fussy cut your bird and um, just try to get it as close to the black line as you can with a little bit of a white border it kind of looks nice um, but and it, you know like I said it might be worth it if you're a hobbyist or a demonstrator to go ahead and uh, get a brother scan and cut that was one of the first things I bought because I, I saw um, my upline is Linda Benninger and she had one it's like that's cool and so i got one so and i've got the brother s uh the scan and cut dx scan and cut dx it was like 300 bucks and they're not cheap but they are really awesome in fact if you have ds paper like this is a bad example because it has lots of light colors and stuff but it's great for cutting out um ds paper when you know there are complete images so um, but I'm going to close up these lines and then I'm going to use my brother's scan and cut. And there is a video, hopefully I'll post it right here. So look down here, the date of my just intro brother scan and cut instructions. So I'm going to do this and I'll be back. And here is my piece all cut out. And if you do have a brother scan and cut, I offset it by 0 0.04. Now I'm going to back it. Now, if you don't have a brother skin and cut, go ahead and put it on a piece of Daffodil Delight and trace around it. And then you're going to have to fussy cut it and just offset it a little bit. But I'm going to cheat again and put my Daffodil Delight back on the um, mat and I'm going to offset it 0.12. So I'm going to go cut that out and I'll be right back. 
So here's my offset and Daffodil Delight. If you look at it, that looks great. So it has that daffodil border on it. And if you do have a brother scan and cut, when you take this off, take your bone folder and just go over it like so to pull that paper down from when it's cut so it looks a little smoother. So let's go ahead and snail these together. Take my silicone craft sheet, keep my table nice and clean and put it right over the top like so. Now let's start putting this baby together here. So here's this little mechanism that we made. And like I said, the one side is just a little longer than the other side. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our card here and I wanna snail it right on the inside. Now, the longer side goes on the bottom and the shorter side is gonna be sticking up like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and snail this pretty darn good here on the long side. So when it faces down, when we put this down, we're gonna have the shorter side flipping up. So I'm gonna put this on that crease. So right up to the edge of that crease in the middle. And make sure you don't snail it too far to the end because um, it'll stick to the inside. So make sure you don't snail it all the way to the end. So like three fourths of the way on the longer piece on the bottom. So it's gonna look like this with the, the flippy end up, I don't know. Got to make sure that you got it that right. So just like so. Now we're gonna take our silicone craft sheet again and put it over the top here. And I'm going to snail the part of the, the short part of that flippy door. So I'm gonna snail this nice and good. Okay, I'm gonna take that off and I'm going to grab this piece that we stamped earlier and I'm going to very carefully fit it perfectly start from the bottom perfectly in that spot now if you have this a little off it's going to catch so um, make sure it just doesn't catch so when you open it up it looks like that okay and now we're going to grab the bird and we're going to snail this so the important thing about the bird is we want to make sure he doesn't catch inside the window. So first of all, I'm going to take my dimensionals. See how I put my dimensionals on my silicone craft sheet? This is in the description of my video. If you don't have one, go into the description, click on the bit.ly link and order them. They're like $7 and they like totally save your workspace. So I'm going to take these dimensionals because we're not going to snail. I'm a liar. So I'm going to put them on this piece like so. Take off the paper on top. And then I'm going to find that sweet spot again of it not blocking the sentiment and able to clear the window. So he's gonna go up pretty high and don't go above the card cause you know, your envelope's only so big. So I'm gonna put him here and I'm not gonna push down super hard just in case I have to adjust him. But you go like this and you open it up. And he's over to the right just a tiny little bit. So I'm going to just pick him up and I'm going to move him over ever or um, just like rotate him ever so slightly and find that spot. So I'm going to rotate him up. Try not to get it above the card or too far over on the other side and push it down and then open him up again. And that, that will work. Look at that. Hoo -hoo. And what it will also do as you put it up is that you can prop him up here too. So he'll open like that and everybody can just see your pretty card inside. So that's really cool. And, and of course we do need to put, I, I kind of like the bow here. So I put in a red ribbon and it's the double stitch satin ribbon part numbers on the description and I'm just going to go bunny ear bunny ear and I'm going to tie this bow real quick. So I went ahead and tied my bow. I always tie my bow on the on the reel. I, I don't cut off a certain amount and then I'm just going to kind of put it up to the card and cut that end off and cut the other end off. 
Then I affixed a, one of these paper pumpkin glue dots. I love these things. So if you get a paper pumpkin, save these. These are fantastic. Um, if you don't have a paper pumpkin and you uh, want to get one or you want to find out information on it, just text me or email me, sorry, and I'll, I'll get you that information. But they hold down things just beautifully. And then I just did some basic little uh, uh, bling here. I put some of these uh, pearl basic jewels. Like I said, this is all in my description of my video. So I took, put down two pearls and then one real red rhinestone. And I'm going to put it here, 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 and here. And here's the finished product. And don't forget, I give away the demo card. So if you want to win the demo card, uh, you have to like and subscribe and put in the comments. I'd like to win the demo card and put your email address so I can text you or uh, email you. And or you can go to Noreen at joyacards.com and write me um, an email and you can see if you win the card. But that'll do it for me. Thanks. Bye.